In 2011, I cut down an Osage orange tree. In 2019, I took one of those staves and finished making a bow from it. Then I went deer hunting, and here are the specs of that bow I used. The length of the bow is 60 inches from knock to knock. The bow ended up being 40 pounds at a 29 inch draw length, and the speed is 150, 152 feet per second. As far as hunting goes, I've always went the route of challenging myself with the equipment and making my own, rather than the challenge of getting bigger animals. And for me, when you're making your own bow, then you're taking it out hunting. When you get an animal, basically any animal is a trophy at that point. This video is placed in Arkansas 2019 and it's a public land hunt. Also in this video, some of the things are a little time specific, so just know we're going back in time. So this video was originally made for the Kramer Ammons YouTube channel. Hey, if you're new, thanks so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoy this video. I just finished making this bow right here and it's got a working handle so it's a little different than most of the bows I make. had six does, I think, just show up. I had been filming that one small one for a while, and I don't know how many they were, but I can stay hidden if they're outside of 15 yards, but they all came around this big bush I'm in. They were all within 15 yards, and I was like trying to lay flat on the ground so they wouldn't see me. And I knew the other does were gonna see me because they were looking in my direction, but I had that feeling they were about to spook because they kept looking over here a lot. One of the deer at least snorted as they ran off only once maybe twice, so not 200 this time. But 
since it's been raining, it's so quiet in here. It, when they're outside of 30 yards, I can't hear anything. Man, that's so difficult to film and hunt with a traditional bow on the ground. It's so hard to get the camera on the deer and in focus without being seen. Good morning, guys. It's raining and it's been raining for the past 24 hours. And this is the cold front coming through right now. It's supposed to stop for two hours here in about 30 minutes. Hopefully that'll make the deer want to move through here with the break in the rain. It's so noisy, I won't be able to see the deer coming, so I'm gonna keep my eyes open. I'm off the ground about 15 feet, and I've got really good cover, so I feel good they're not gonna see me this morning. All we need is them to come past. We're back at it this evening and it's still raining. This rain is supposed to turn to snow as soon as the sun sets tonight. We're still on the front end of the cold front. From yesterday until the end of today, it's a 20 degree drop. It's kind of cold out, especially once you're wet, but you can't shoot a deer unless you're in the woods. It's probably the same group of does has been giving me much headache around this area. I've seen them many times and I just haven't been able to get one in range and get a good shot on one. Tonight might be the night though. I've got two, two and a half hours to sit and I'm excited to see what comes by. small doe work right under my stand and past me before I even got the camera set up or anything. So that's a good sign. Hopefully some more will come past here soon. The storm broke. Uh, the cloud should be leaving and it's the first time in two or three days without rain or snow. It's 25, 27 degrees so it's a nice cool morning. Let's see if we can get it done. I think we did it. I saw it. I saw it run off and it stopped up there about 100 yards. Its tail was just flickering a lot and then it slowly walked off after about 30 seconds. I think it was going to lay down. I think I had a perfect shot. I'm going to have to review the film. 
but it came up right above me, about 10 yards. And that was the first opening it came through. And I've got a ton of leaves, you can see. Right there, and so I couldn't get like any footage of it until I got right into that opening. I feel like I had a perfect shot. Because I'm on the side of a hill, it was eye level with me. Or very close to eye level at least. These doe back here have been skirting me day after day after day. And I keep seeing them, but just out of range. Or when I was on the ground, they kept catching the glimpse of the camera or of me. But I think we got it, I'm so pumped. What was really interesting, you can hear that car back there. It like ran up to the road and it just like stopped on the side of the road it looked like and then it wandered back into the trees. I think it was planning on crossing but I think it didn't feel good enough and so it just like stopped and kind of waddled off. <sighs> that is so cool. I'm gonna probably hang out a little longer. That smaller doe is somewhere around here still. head back to the house. I want to look at the footage just to make sure that it was a good shot. And then from there, we're going to recover this deer. I'm so pumped. <sighs> that feels really good. All right, I'm going to call my dad real quick, see if he's with Creed. Good morning. Good morning. Did you get your deer quartered? Yeah. Nice. Is it in the freezer now? I ended up putting it in that big cooler and then I put the back straps in a big, uh, stainless steel bowl in the fridge. Would you shoot Kramer? <laughs> That's why we, I told him, we're on our way home from basketball. I'm like, hey, reporting live and answered the phone on speakerphone. That's hilarious. Well, good job on getting your deer done. I think I just smoked a doe. Oh, that's cool. You want that mm -hmm. meat. So tell us the story. And they keep working past it's in a certain pattern I've seen and they've just been out of range. And so I kind of moved the saddle to the other side of this ravine back here and they worked right behind me. I couldn't see the deer uh, with the camera or anything until it came to my one opening. And since I'm on the side of the hill, like the deer is almost eye level with me. Wow. But it, it stopped at 10 yards and thank, thank goodness for the saddle. I drew back and I had branches in the way. So I just like reclined and leaned back and I had gotten a clear shot at it. And I think I just, the entire arrow disappeared in. It looked like it hit perfectly on the heart. I saw the deer run 100 yards and it was about to cross the road, but it just stopped right there. And then it was, its tail was just like flickering back and forth, you know. And I was like, man, that thing's hurting. And then it kind of wobbled off towards the trees I'm in, but behind some brush where I couldn't see it. So I think it's just laying right over there, but I'm going to go watch the footage to make sure what I remember is correct. Well, that's awesome. Feel like when it came into your footage range, you got some good footage at that point? I think I did. I mean, I know it was perfectly in the frame. I don't know if it was completely in focus because I was, you know, manual focus um, and then trying to film it myself and try not to move too much. But I, I think I got some really good footage of it. Right, right. All right, I'll pack up and go inside. I'll let you know what we see. Sounds great. We'll see you. All right, see you later. Let's do this. All right, so we're back at the base of where I was sitting this morning, and it's been about three hours. The reason is, is as we looked at that footage, we saw the deer quartering towards us a little bit. As soon as I released that arrow, it started to move, and it moved its left leg forward and started twisting its body. And so as it ran off, we see the exit was pretty far back, and as soon as the arrow hit the deer, the fletching kicked hard to the right, so it looked like the arrow kicked away from its vitals. I think the deer is dead. I just wanted to give it a little time just to make sure. So it's been three hours. We're gonna move forward with a little bit of caution and just keep glassing through the woods. They're pretty wide open, so we should be able to see pretty far through here. So hopefully we'll just see it up here in uh, 150, 200 yards. So this is the point of impact. I've got where I was sitting up the tree about 10 yards that way. Um, yeah, there's blood right here. Right off the start, bright red, bright red blood. That's good news. 
That's good news. That's good news. Yes. Wait, oh yeah, there's gold there. You see it? Yeah, it's right there. Oh my gosh. Congratulations, buddy. Lungs and everything. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Hey, first, first doe in Arkansas. First deer in Arkansas. Here she is, this is very exciting for me. There's a lot of firsts that happen on this hunt today, but it feels really good to be able to get a deer down. Last day of October, but it's good to get my first deer down of the year. And my second one ever actually with a homemade bow, something I made myself, a homemade Osage long bow. I really enjoy the challenge of using a bow I make myself, and there's a lot of up and downs as you guys have seen, but in the end, I think it's definitely worth it for me, and it's very fun. So thanks. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for cheering me on, everybody who has been cheering me on. And if you like this video, if you like this sort of content, then subscribe because we have a goal here to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of 2019. And I would love it for you to be a part of that. I'm going to get this deer cleaned up and we may be having steak tonight.